Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome parents, pupils and staff to this virtual speech day. I'm only sorry that I can't welcome you in person. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Charles Packshaw and I had the privilege of taking over from Bill Rimmer as your Chair of Governors in December. This past academic year has been like no other that any of us have experienced. We've all had to manage another lockdown and the restrictions that the pandemic has placed on school life. Our staff, I hope you'll agree, have delivered very high quality remote learning and have risen wonderfully to the challenges that the pandemic has placed on them. Our pupils too have had to adapt to new ways of learning and they've done that brilliantly. Last, but by no means least, our parents have been fantastic at supporting their children and the staff during the lockdown and the rest of the year, whilst also managing the implications of COVID-19 on all other aspects of their lives. I'd like to thank all of you for the way that you've helped us to navigate a year like no other. This year, we've also seen the start of the implementation of Louise North's exciting strategy for the future of the college, Vision 2025. We've appointed Alex Boyd-Williams to the new role of Head of Sixth Form to bring greater focus to the strategic direction of the Sixth Form. We're introducing our new Key Stage 3 curriculum, encouraging our pupils to see the links between their subjects and to develop themselves as learners, discovering the joy that is to be found in research and in reading. In April, we also welcomed Jonathan Egan as head of the prep school. He and Louise are working together to create the seamless education that is at the heart of our Vision 2025. We've welcomed a new deputy head pastoral, Oliver Lloyd, to the senior school, who alongside Joe Coventry King at the prep, has created a pastoral care and wellbeing strategy. All of our staff have worked very hard this year to maintain connection with our pupils on a daily basis when we were disconnected during lockdown. Oliver and Joe have introduced the Flow Skills program, which will be implemented from September across the college. It's a proactive approach to wellbeing that aims to equip our pupils with the skills to meet life's challenges and thrive in an increasingly complex world. We've also seen our new website go live this week, clearly expressing the college's educational ethos and in doing so, rightly raising its profile. All of these changes reflect our philosophy that we believe in individuals at Framingham College. There's no typical Framinghamian. With the breadth of opportunity available in our very holistic offering, we support every pupil to create their own story. At this time of year, we also say goodbye to our leavers. We wish you every success in the future in all the different paths that you will be following. I know that your education at Framingham College will have equipped you with the knowledge and skills to thrive in your adult world. We hope you will stay in touch with us and continue to be part of the Framlingham College family. For those of you that are staying, we look forward to welcoming you back next term to share in the great sense of momentum and excitement that Louise and her team are creating at the college. Lastly, to parents, pupils and members of staff, on behalf of all of the governors, thank you for your continued support of the college.
Respected chairman, principal, parents, staff and pupils. I was really looking forward to delivering the speech in front of you all. However, once again, we find ourselves falling just short at the final hurdle before normality can resume in our lives. Nevertheless, I take great pride in still having the opportunity to address the entire Framingham College community, albeit behind a screen. My 15 years at Framlingham are now about to become 15 years of memories. Starting all those years ago in nursery with Dan and Megan, the three of us cross-legged on the floor, book bags in hands, now finishing together amongst the 80 year 13 friends that we got to know along the way. My memories and life stories here at the college are full of the typical highs and lows. Today, having the honor to address you all as the head of school for one last time being a particular high and being given my only two school academic negatives being particular lows. My thanks goes to Mr. Myers Allen and Mr. Dyer for blemishing my otherwise perfect school record with these and perhaps giving it some character. Nothing in life comes easy and everything has to be challenged and grown from within. I learned this from a young age, receiving doubt from few adults over my ability to lead and prosper. Well, I am stubborn, and I refuse to believe my potential had limits. So with the ongoing nurturing and the unwavering supportive structure of our school system, I believe I have proven those people wrong. In fact, each and every one of us in Year 13 have been guided and embraced in a caring, warm, and considered education of life skills and learning. We all offer strengths in so many different areas, from music and art, to sport, science and drama. The list goes on, and it is a credit to the collective cohort of Year 13 students' determination and resilience, teamed with the unflinching dedication of our teachers and mentors, that we have all had the varied opportunities to help each of us find our voice. The Framingham College ethos underlines resilience as an important learning tool in our development. In learning from the difficult times and using those times to help us stand taller and shape our future successes. So, I would now like to thank and mention some of those inspirational staff members that have shown and taught me how to learn from my mistakes. To Mrs North and Miss Vessels, for not only believing in me, but for continuing to help me develop the skill set I need to take me into the world from today. And also, for patiently navigating the multitude of mullets and buzz cuts that graced our corridors at the start of the year. Thank you to Mr. Lavery, the housemaster that has given his absolute everything to support and guide his Rendlesham boys. Sir, your chess masterclasses are and always will be greatly appreciated, and I wish you the best of luck in your next chapter. Mr. Gandhi, our sport across the field is strong thanks to all your organisation and inclusion, whether it be for a first team or a fourth team. But sir, all I would ask for future years is that once in a while, Greshams would come here to play. One sport which has played a large part of my time here is tennis. So thank you to Richard and Trevor for the time and effort you have put into growing tennis as a sport at the college. We as students owe endless gratitude to the members of staff behind the scenes in all aspects of school life, working tirelessly to allow the school and students within it to thrive. Lastly, to my prefect team, thank you for generally turning up on time to our weekly meetings and being great ambassadors for the school. I could not have asked for a better team to take us through what ended up being an unprecedented and tricky year. As I finish my time at Frowningham, the last head of school, which I hope is a compliment to me, I now wish all the luck and normality 
to the incoming prefects, to the head girl and head boy, Daisy and Hugh. Your team will have big boots to fill, so set the bar high and then rise above it. Thank you. I love thee. Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight, for the ends of being and ideal grace. I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need. 
by sun and candlelight. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee with a passion put to use in my old griefs and my childhood's faith. I love thee with a love I seem to lose with my lost saints. I love thee with the breath, smiles, tears of all my life. And if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death. Speech day is a celebration, not a time for what might have been. And as I hope I will show, there is so much that we have strived for, shared in and achieved this year at Framlingham College. 12 months ago, we published Vision 2025, a comprehensive manifesto of our priorities for the next few years. I am pleased to report that in all areas, we have made distinct progress. On the academic front, a newly appointed graduate scholar will enhance a developing culture of academic ambition, helping to enthuse our pupils with a love of learning. We have a team of lead practitioners who will work with the head of teaching and learning to further hone our teachers' skills. Entrepreneurship is also to the fore, with over three quarters of our year nine pupils opting to take our new business studies GCSE course next year. We have overhauled and revitalized our careers department drawing on the skills and experience of our parent body to inspire our pupils. Never have sport and fitness been more important in education. The skills and personal development that our pupils acquire through our expert sports coaching are second to none. And while staff and pupils alike have relished the return to competitive sport this term, throughout the year the quality of our provision and our high expectations have never wavered. The pupils have benefited from a creative, demanding and purposeful sports program. Our one college philosophy is being embedded across the prep and senior schools. Next year, both will share a common timetable, meaning far more opportunity for staff to work across both sites. A new seven to nine curriculum with a more cohesive interdisciplinary style of teaching and learning will be consolidated in years seven and eight from September. We will have college-wide directors of sport, music, drama and computer science with other disciplines to follow, overseeing a seamless education from 3 to 18 to the benefit of all. Just three weeks ago, we submitted our application for ArtsMark accreditation. Administered by the Arts Council, the ArtsMark recognises creativity across the curriculum and is the only creative quality standard for schools. Through our profound and far-reaching response to this scheme, we have promoted arts and culture in the broadest possible sense and in every imaginable context within the curriculums and co-curriculums of both schools, in all manner of enrichment activities, local community partnerships and outreach initiatives. For instance, we have introduced the Arts Award to the college, set up Suffolk's first fab club for young disabled people and their parents, and departments are revising their schemes of work to include cross-curricular links with arts-based subjects, making for a more engaging, colourful and creative curriculum. All this comes on top of our established arts programme, such as Cabaret, which this year was a wonderfully accomplished showcase of the Beatles' music. Our A-level and GCSE virtual art exhibitions display a breadth of talent and individuality, as do the design and technology creations in Paul's Court. The journey to accreditation has made both staff and pupils increasingly aware of the benefits of being part of a more curious, collaborative and outward-facing community in which access to the arts empowers, enthuses and inspires. Many staff have been involved demonstrating creativity and resourcefulness. But particular thanks must go to Mark Robinson, for whom our application was a culmination of 18 months' work. We will learn more over the summer. Another very significant initiative shaping the College is the rollout of FLOW, an integrated programme at the heart of our pastoral care and wellbeing strategy. Flow draws upon six key values, perseverance, integrity, respect, kindness, courage, and aspiration. These will guide everything we do, both as individuals and as a school. The Flow Skills Programme encompasses practical life skills, challenge, safeguarding skills, digital literacy and citizenship, social and emotional skills. In tandem, we are also investing in an online wellbeing hub called Teen Tips, accessible by our staff, Pupils and parents, it is a resource designed to help us all better understand how to meet each child's social and emotional needs. 
A very visible development is the new college website, which went live this week. I urge you to visit. It is a bold statement of who we believe we are as a community and what we do. It isn't easy to quickly conjure the spirit and philosophy of a school upon a screen, while also providing the news and depth of information which parents rightfully expect. Jude Jarvis and her marketing team have struck just the right balance, all within a refreshingly vibrant and uplifting design. You will also find there the inspirational film we have made. In both, we dwell on a central message, one which I hope will be immediately recognisable to all our parents and pupils. Framlingham is a school that fulfils the needs and aspirations of the individual, allowing each pupil to flourish and to become more than they believe possible. This we sum up in one line, part invitation and part exhortation. Let's see who you are. It is impossible, of course, to detail the numerous ways in which we see potential being realised at Framlingham. But as an indication, consider these few stories. Titanic Investments, a team consisting of economists Arthur O'Toole, Ben Sunderland, Tom Crothers and Theo Salsby, finished third in the London Institute of Banking and Finance UK Student Investor Challenge, a prominent national competition which attracted over 6,000 entries their well-researched and informative film dazzled with wit and invention. Georgie Gardens earned a place on the Team GB Under-23 Elite Development Programme for Hockey, a considerable achievement in any context, but particularly so for a 17-year-old. Most of the other 29 players on the programme are at Britain's leading sporting universities. Meanwhile, Daisy Ford is playing hockey for England under 18, and Liv Buchanan also playing hockey for England under 17. Tommy Bell achieved bronze and silver in the Inspiring Digital and Enterprise Awards, demonstrating a high level of skill and knowledge in the field of computer science. Anna Sophia Heiner was a recipient of one of only 120 sixth form internships awarded across the country at the Institute of Economic Affairs. Ollie Moore was one of 28 finalists from across the UK and Ireland chosen by the Song Academy organisation for its Young Songwriter of the Year competition. Faye Locke produced incredible work for her art A-level. She created her very own Barbie in a box as she considered gender stereotyping in children's toys. Fraser Johnson, George Jackson and Callum Pearce were selected for the Suffolk Golf Squad. Poppy Beals has captained the Norfolk Golf Junior team this season. Finley Bloor, Catherine and Emily Williams were all invited to join the National Youth Choir. They and Charlie Alabaster have also been singing regularly with the St Mary Le Tower Choir. Veronica Lampasca achieved full marks in her extended project qualification, looking at the extent to which the placebo effect helps in the treatment of Parkinson's disease. Tabby Wade and Mimi Soulsby trained to be Duke of Edinburgh ambassadors, responsible for arranging and promoting DOV activities within the school and beyond to promote the benefits of the scheme for young people. Harry Potter and Sam Sporborg were both talent spotted for their incredible filmmaking skills. The list goes on. Nationally, last year's public examination process did not run entirely smoothly, to say the least. Despite the somewhat confused system, however, our pupils' results reflected an upward trajectory we hope to see continuing this year. Some will quibble with the process, but there can be no doubt that the results we saw in 2020 were a true reflection of the hard work, persistence and ambition of our pupils and their teachers. This year has brought similar challenges, but again, we simply adapt and get on with the task at hand, confident in the quality of our teaching. Over the last 12 months, issues surrounding equality, diversity and acceptance have come to the fore across society as perhaps never before. Earlier this month, we published new guidelines on diversity and acceptance, underlining that as a community, discrimination of any sort is not tolerated and furthermore will be challenged. We are proactive in educating our pupils about the negative impact of sexual harassment and the need to treat one another with respect, regardless of sexual or gender identity, race, religion, age or disability. Our prefects are helping to develop a strategy that will see them taking an active role in educating the younger years as together we reinforce a positive culture of kindness. Exceptional talent exists in all sectors of society and we have a long tradition of supporting children who might not otherwise be able 
to access an education here. In conjunction with the Society of Old Framlinghamians, we are poised to enhance our bursary provision with the launch of an exciting new sixth form bursary campaign, of which I will be delighted to share more details in due course. Our recent public benefit audit will be the foundation of a new and enhanced outreach programme. Social responsibility comes in many forms, and the commitment we made this year to the Responsible Schools Project will drive a heightened focus on sustainability and environmental awareness across the college. We will strive to reduce our carbon footprint and use classroom and community initiatives to engage more meaningfully with the environment and the science surrounding climate change. As it should be, pupil engagement is at the very heart of this programme. To each and all of our pupils, I say thank you. Thank you for adapting during this strange year for our society, for seeing opportunity, for being patient, for keeping your sense of humour and for looking out for one another. I have no doubt that you, like me, are looking forward to a life freed from restrictions, to packed sidelines, hearty singing in chapel, a full and bustling dining hall and noisy corridors. It is not far away. Your energy, exuberance and effervescence bring the school to life. We all need a break first, but I cannot wait to feel that buzz once again in September. This year's prefects have been exemplary role models. Conscientious, thoughtful, persistent and caring, they always had the interests of you, the pupils, at heart. Thank you in particular to Lucas Walker, to Lula Torrance and Henry Bevan for leading the team. And to our leavers. Leaving can be emotional because of the friendships you have made. It can be frightening because what comes next is uncertain. It can be overwhelming to leave familiarity behind. However, we have equipped you all with the skills that you need to face that uncertainty, to adapt to new situations and to embrace opportunities. You have nothing to fear and everything to look forward to. Life will shake you up, turn you around, surprise, delight, confuse and disappoint you. That is the way of things. You will encounter many different people, but you have learned how to communicate with clarity and empathy. You know how to work in a team and you understand the importance of tolerance and understanding. You should also know the potential within you. So you are ready, ready to leave, to go forward into the world and to make a positive difference. We believe in you and we are proud of you. Three words come to mind when describing the college staff, both teaching and non-teaching. Dedicated, inspiring and adaptable. Circumstances, as we all know, have not been easy. Thank you very much for all you have done to support and underpin the values of the college. The composition of any staff common room is forever evolving and this year I am delighted to have made a number of exciting appointments for September and beyond and more information will follow. As ever, there are a number of departures to record. Renaissance man Mark Robinson, historian par excellence and co-author of the college's official history with the sadly late Michael Cook, retires after 31 years at Framlingham College. Deeply committed and caring, Mark has been a galvanising deputy head co-curricular. Bernard Dyer, a Francophile who will be forever associated with Stradbrook House, and Helen Myers-Allen, long-serving housemistress of Moreau, both retire. We bid farewell to Kerrison housemaster Steve French, Dorothy Englert, Fiona Regan, Helen McCartney, Ayatunde Edu, Peter Giles, Tom Hampson, Angela Kendall and Pam Riley. We also say goodbye to our language assistants, Carla de Brito and Esther Andres. Andrew Payne, Operations Director and Nick Chaplin, Finance Director, leave us after the best part of two decades leading the business and operational end of the school. Dan Wood, Head of Catering and Events, also leaves at the end of term. For some, the next steps are just down the road. For others, the journey ahead is much further flung. Wherever the future takes them, I thank them all for their service to the college and wish them the very best.
Only when you have the privilege of seeing what they do close up do you fully appreciate the commitment and responsibility required of a school governor. We are lucky to have the governors we do, and I am grateful to each of them. Their work is often thankless and usually unseen, but essential, and undertaken with great diligence. My thanks go to their chair, Charles Packshaw, for his invaluable advice and support over the last two terms. I owe a special debt to Charles's predecessor, Bill Rimmer, who stepped down in December. In his three years as chair, Bill faced what he would no doubt describe as choppy waters, but no one could have been more suited to holding the tiller during this time. Insightful, reassuring, and with a ready wit, Bill navigated through the challenges posed with characteristic determination and a sailor's seasoned eye. Thank you. Finally, I would like to thank our parents for entrusting your children to us once again. Next year, we look forward to welcoming you back within our buildings to concerts, productions, and many other events besides. I look forward to seeing you on the sidelines in expectation of a full competitive sports programme. We have missed you. We are a community together, parents, educators, and pupils, and we have an exciting future in which to share. Every time